And the deranged diversity drive sweeping the Western world now looks to be coming for the world of science, with a leading BBC presenter and scientist claiming that science is, well, too white. Dr. Maggie Adrian Pocock, a physicist and space scientist who has presented the hit BBC4 show The Sky at Night since 2014, told The Observer, When I grew up, there were many kids who looked at science and thought, well, someone like me doesn't do that because it's not my culture, it's not for me. I don't have a history of this. Diversity is about bringing different ideas and people into science, she says, because... If it's all just done by the European white guys, we get a very blinkered view of the world. So tonight I'm asking, is a top BBC presenter right that science is now too white? Let me know your thoughts at uh, GB News on Twitter or Mark at GB I'll bring you the results of our poll shortly. But to debate this, I'm delighted to welcome social commentator Joanna Jarju and the director of Don't Divide Us, Al Alka Sigal Cuthbert. Uh, great to have both of you with me. Um, can I start with you, Joanna? Uh, do you think that science is now too white? I don't. And I don't actually think that this is um, what this scientist was talking about. I think that what she was referring to is that we're accustomed to a certain profile of person being the famous scientist. And when we talk about diversity, we talk about, yes, diversity of culture. But there's also diversity of thought and diversity of thought comes from people with different experiences. And when she references, you know, um, children who don't see science as part of their culture, you know, it is actually known that so many different countries um, in ancient history, whether it's the Egyptians that were pioneers in astronomy have had such, you know, um, a big contribution to science as we know it today. But actually what we see is that the people who are the most famous scientists and have been promoted the most have tended to be uh, European white man. Indeed. Uh, listen, uh, Alka Segal Cuthbert, great to have you with us. Do you think that uh, this presenter is right, that science is dominated by white Europeans? Is she right to use that language? No, she isn't. I think it's actually quite ignorant, silly and actually quite dangerous. Um, for a start, there's a difference between the history of science and science itself. Um, now, the history of science as a history of anything is, is a kind of subject where there can be a genuine and legitimate need for excavation of voices or works that have kind of been, you know, overlooked. But that that could include other white scientists as well, right? Or other women scientists. It doesn't. It's not necessarily just black scientists. Mm. I think it's silly to think that you get diversity of thought um, as if that's distributed according to skin color. Right, you get diversity of thought depending on the kind of thinking people have done, the books that they've read, their own personal experiences, their intellectual experiences, their own educational background in maths and science. Um, those are the kinds of things that will get you diversity of thought, not not skin colour or cultural background. And I think you know the point you say. You know, I I think most people might think science isn't for me because it's so hard and that's largely because it depends a lot on maths and we know that there's for a long time there's been a huge maths problem mm. right but i think apart from this the really dangerous bit that is not really often talked about is that today we have this very casual talk of skin color being a problem by people in public figure you know in, in positions of public authority and i think this is a customizing us to see the world in terms of very simplistic, reductive, preferred oppressed groups, preferred oppressor groups. And it's dangerous, right? It's really divisive. It eventually encourages us to just sort of accept that, oh, if you're in the wrong group, you might not, you know, you might need to be shoved, chunted out. You might not have your voice at that meeting. You might not get the job. And eventually you might even, you know, you might not even be, get your life. Joanna? Because, you know... <clears throat> You've just said that diversity of thought comes from people's experiences. People's experiences are heavily influenced on their culture and their background. And it's not just about, you know, saying that it's white people. It's the fact that certain people come from certain cultures and countries that have a history of this. And this isn't the type of history that's pushed. So it's basically just the argument is that, you know, the, 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 base, the starting of science 
isn't just from the European perspective. You've got people, like I've already said, like the ancient Egypt, who were pioneers. But I think that even from when I was at school, I don't know about anybody else, but when I was taught about the ancient Egyptians, I wasn't taught it from a from a um, science perspective. And the reason why diversity <clears throat> matters as well, it's not just about pushing other people out. It's about showing people a representation but of Joanna, themselves. Joanna, they feel that they belong within that field. Uh, Joanna, Dr. Maggie Adrian Pocock is a great talent, very good presenter, great scientist. But um, isn't referencing people's skin colour racist? And doesn't it work against the words of Martin Luther King, who preached the idea of a colourblind society? How can this individual just casually refer to white Europeans as a bad thing? Well, I think that you're completely misrepresenting it, actually. Um, I just Mark, directly I quoted that, her, Joanna. I've oh, directly yeah, quoted I her. I think the way that you're interpreting it, saying that she's saying that science is too white, what she's doing is just stating a fact of what we see, what everybody sees in front of you know their eyes. They know that the main kind of um, representation of science, the most famous scientists that have been pushed and made famous, are a particular um, type of person. So I don't see how it would necessarily be that it's racist. But can, can you imagine, Joanna, can you imagine I, saying, can you imagine saying that another discipline, let's say literature, was was too black? Okay. If you said that literature was too black because you wanted more diversity within literature, then there's an argument for diversity. It's not that diversity only counts if it's only white people. You could talk about diversity when it comes to sexuality on boards or, you know, when it comes to gender. There's so many other areas of diversity that we talk about, but people only have a problem with it when it's to do with race. When people talk about d gender diversity, <laughs> we're all for women and, you know, for more diversity of women, but you've only got a problem when it's skin colour. OK, uh, what do you think, uh, finally, think fi final thoughts on this, Alka Sigal cuthbert the, the law of gravity is not white, it's not black, it's not got any colour, right? It's an it's a immaterial thing. Knowledge itself accumulates and assimilates and, and, and it synthesises, especially in a subject like science. The reason we hear about, Dar about Darwin or Newton is not because they're white, it's because the work that they did, the intellectual leaps they That's made, that were based That's on previous knowledge, that were based on previous knowledge contributions from around the world, but they managed to, because of who they were, at that time, and their intellectual capacity, their knowledge of science, managed to make significant breakthroughs. I don't think we can need I to be ashamed of that. OK, can Joanna, briefly, if you can. Think we've got a problem. Yeah, just one thing before we wrap up. This isn't about taking away from Darwin and other famous scientists. It's about adding to it. It's not saying that we shouldn't have those people that have been pioneers in science and have been, you know, great for us as a society. It's about promoting that, OK, we can have a few more Darwins, but actually maybe we can have a few more, I don't know, people from Nigeria or, or like the more you open it up to the next generation, okay. the more you... Why, do, why do you think Darwin isn't for the Nigerian people? What, what did why you say? Why do you think Darwin isn't for that? Uh, why do you think Darwin, you know, if you were to ask Nigeria, where's your Nigerian people, where's okay. your Darwin? Why wouldn't they say, well, you know, Darwin is our Darwin? Uh, my <laughs> thanks you know, my thanks to one. social commentator Joanna Jarju and the director of Don't Divide Us, Alka Segal Cuthbert. Thank you both uh, for your contribution to a fascinating debate. Who do you agree with? Is science now too white? David says science is based on evidence and facts. Your skin tone is irrelevant. The only relevant quality is your ability. Neil says so-called white science built the modern world. We should take pride and have confidence in it. Jackie says Dr. Maggie is proof that the colour of your skin does not matter in science. She's highly intelligent and has done very well in the industry because of that, not because of her race. Well, your verdict is now in 7% say that science is too white. 93% say no, it is not.